Stacy, how are you, hey, my friend? How are you? 92. 92, my friend. We are here after a wonderful week off. Look at yes. that. We are, I mean, who thought, people probably thought we like folded and moved away and <laughs> no. abducted by aliens. Oh, much they say is possible now, so... <laughs> Listen, how about that stuff with NASA? I mean, it's getting a little that, scary. It, I, I, it's, it's, no, it, this is like real life X Files. I yeah. remember I used to have this conversation with my father, and this has nothing to do with Rocky. We used <laughs> to have this conversation. I would say, Dad, do you believe in UFOs? No. He goes, That's all. He goes, That's it. Earth is the one and only place in the world. Not, right. th nothing exists. Now, this is before the Pentagon Papers and everything was coming right. out over the last right. few years. Right. He goes, I, I said, Dad. You're you're one of the smartest, most rational guys I know, and and I mean that. I'm not just saying that because he's oh, watching. Yeah. I mean that, right? And I, I said, how can you sit there and say that Earth is the only Somewhere. way where life was right. created? And he goes, right. oh, that's the way it is. <laughs> I used to laugh at that all the time. I go, oh, maybe you're right. I don't know. Maybe you know something. I don't know. And then all these things start coming out. And so I, just, I talked to my dad. I wasn't this last time. I think it was maybe last month when I was in. And he goes, that's crazy. Life can exist anywhere, right? And I go, right. Okay, <laughs> sure, sure. But it's funny because you try to wrap your mind around space space like, yeah here in a city you have your house you got your rooms your walls your yard your fence mm -hmm. sidewalk street the next house there's something next on the other side think eternity and nothing right now i'm looking at the stars like it never ends right what is never it never ends it's like what i'm talking about right now we should probably get <laughs> on to a new subject <laughs> it never ends well i'm gonna end it right here because <laughs> here's my dad who is not one to embellish ever he's very you know he's an yeah, engineer yeah. right and right. i he's done a lot of contract work for the government over his lifetime and i'm like did you ever work or somehow with that he's like oh yeah he goes we've known about extraterrestrials since the 50s i was like oh just the way he said it was like oh yeah we've, right. we know that it's i was crazy, like okay Never mind. All right, so we'll move on. <laughs> it's crazy. That was like, whoa. Yeah. No, that that's that's serious. All right. So, where so, are we? 1992, Stacy. What what glorious event <laughs> was going on in Stallone's world? One that he's not crazy about, but I still think it's adorable, which is stop or my mom will shoot. <laughs> uh, you know what's funny? I, I that's I was going through my posters the other day, and that was one that Oscar and Nighthawks. I don't have those movie posters. I did mm. as a kid, and mm -hmm. in the numerous moves in my life, it was Sue and I always moving like every other year to a new apartment or something. Yeah. Uh, I either got ripped them up, they lost them, whatever. So I just ordered the three posters on eBay, and it's real cheap. It's like you know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars, where it's very, very inexpensive. But stop or my mom will shoot. I think it's probably Sly's worst film ever that is not me saying it i right. don't think stopper my mom is his worst i have two other ones that i think are his worst no one cares what i think so i'm not even going to bother to mention what i think they are <laughs> not true but but i i really think it would stopper my mom will shoot is maybe his third worst movie Okay, and, and at one point, and, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to you on your thoughts on this. I remember one interview Sly said, and it it stays with me to this day. They said, Sly, what's your worst movie you've ever done? Stop my mom's shoot. And then he let it hang there. It was a long pause, and then he goes, he goes, you know, I uh, I heard that the North Koreans they kidnap american spies and they put them in a chair with fish hooks on their eyes and they make them watch it until they give up <laughs> yes, government yes, secrets. yes he did say that at one point <laughs> and it's that very fact that i love so much about sly that self-deprecation yeah. yeah. that he is brilliant at he yeah. really really is a self-aware guy so i don't know what's your thoughts on stop i i have not seen it in a very long time but i remember seeing it as a kid it, well, not a kid, but I remember seeing it and laughing. It was just neat to see him in something kind of light and goofy. And I don't know. People are so hard on him. I'm like, I don't think the point was to be, you know, Shakespeare. <laughs> I think right. the point was just to be fun and goofy. And it was. So 
Yeah, it, it, you're totally right. And again, it was on a uh, a thing Arnold had tricked him. We've all heard that right. story a hundred times. Story. So we do we do know that story. Yeah. But uh, again, I remember watching. There's a very funny scene on a ledge where Stallone's character yes. Joe Bomowski is trying to save a guy who's going to jump, and of course, right. Joe's mother Estelle Getty is on down on the street, and he's like. I, I'm telling you, I know people are going to say I'm looking at this as rose colored glasses or kissing up the sly, but I mean it. Right. Sly was great in Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. It was cute. It was I, funny. I, he was very good. Forget how dumb the movie is. <laughs> he himself. Right. So Sly was very convincing as a mama's boy detective. <laughs> a guy who's has to deal, you know, 47 year old guy whose mother comes to live with him. I, I, right. He was just convincing. I don't know. I thought it was good. Well, it's funny because I remember all these years later hearing people talk about it. You know, we were kids when it came out and now hearing I, I was surprised when people really didn't like it. I was surprised when Sly really didn't like it because I left there laughing you know, feeling like it was funny. So I was like, what? Oh, I guess maybe I'm just not hard enough. Right, or, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, I don't know. I'm just not that critical, I guess. I don't know. But If, if you had one other movie that missed the mark in your heart, what would you say? Uh, it's funny because Driven had moments that I really, really appreciated, but it fell a little flat. Driven, driven, little, driven yeah. I think is 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 the ultimate worst film he's ever been in. Yeah. Yet, Joe, the Hummer Tanto, what a nickname, <laughs> Joe the Hummer Tanto. I don't know if that would be a nickname I would go back and reuse. I don't know. If he, <laughs> I know why he uses it. He hums when he drives to get in the zone. Right. But right. it's not necessarily a nickname I would like to have. But Joe the Hummer Tanto, uh, again. I thought Sly was great in it, especially in the drug addicted alcohol scenes that uh, uh, Joe Tanto had the outtakes. They were great, mm -hmm. great. His, some of his scenes with Burt Reynolds were fantastic, but Burt Reynolds is a little over the top when he acts. He's kind of like Charlton Heston in that way. Yeah, that's true. It mm -hmm. is. But uh, again, I, I just, I enjoy there's a reason why I'm a Sly fan. He, I just enjoy what he does in a movie. The mm -hmm. movie may be crap. And in this instance, I can tell you, I know for a fact, Rennie Harlan is the guy that screwed this up. You don't see Rennie Harlan in the business anymore, do you? Well, that's true. Right. You don't. He's gone. Yeah. Now, Rennie mm -hmm. Harlan did a great job with Cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. But not this. This was a disaster. Yeah. Um, anyways, I would just move on from that October <laughs> October events what happened last month and by last month I mean like yesterday was last month so what happened so we have a new baby here he is Mr. Vincenzo Nunzio oh, there you go. Look how adorable look it looks like a fighter you know he's so scrumptious and I loved the video Tony D and family and his wife and congratulations to the whole family because they're they're adorable and he's they raising are. a rocky family very on purpose but, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. He, the first thing he showed was the t shirt. His first t shirt was that Rocky t shirt from Sly Stallone Shop. I'm like, of course. Good parenting. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, very there, good. There's parent. one thing, I, there's a lot I could say about Tony D, but the one thing I will say is those kids, yes. those kids are darn lucky to have a fine dad like yeah. Tony and mom. Yeah. You know, they, they really are. They're just, they're great parents and these kids are going to have the the um the cinder blocks yeah. for their emotional their personalities yeah. to survive and move and thrive mm -hmm. through the world so mm -hmm. just the biggest of congratulations yes. to you guys seriously congratulations yeah so they're just so sweet and it's funny i showed you know i always show but my mom loves tony d so i always show the videos and she just I just want Tony D to know that my mom loves you guys too. She's just like, oh, <laughs> there's the sweetest family. And I just love yeah, their sincerity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And let's see. One of uh, Sly's very dear friends, Henry Winkler's birthday happened this month. So that was love him. Love him. Hey, hey. happy birthday, Henry. <laughs> hey, Stace, what else has been happening in October? Well, one of our favorite girls walked down mm. the aisle. She did. <laughs> Jess Morelli. You guys know her. There she is right there. This is a picture of her. There, Look at that. There you go. <laughs> she, 
<laughs> of Jessica course. And Bradley. And look who shows up. Sylvester Stallone. Now, admittedly, he looks a little flat and why Sly would come shirtless dressed as Rocky <laughs> to a wedding. I don't know. Maybe Sly's got issues. He's we never don't told mind. Us about. <laughs> we don't mind. That's fine. I'm sure Jess would mind. But, you know, I had the pleasure of getting to know Jess very, very well. She's probably one of the sweetest people um, mm -hmm. I've had face-to-face -face contact with. Not just online people, but actually getting to know her. I got to know her, her fiancé. Uh, uh, Bradley, and but also her family. Yes, uh, I, I so sat and sweet. had a, a coffee and a, a sandwich with when they were in Philly not that long ago, and so th uh, they just got married. And so I just wanted to say, we wanted to say, big congratulations! congratulations. Yeah, and of course, the best proposal. Oh ever. my God! Look at that! Look that! <laughs> and you know, she didn't know; she had no idea at that time. And there they are at the Rocky Steps in the rain, doing it. I mean, like it's you awesome. It. It's gotta awesome. In there, there they, there are. they are. Yeah, beautiful I dress. To, I have to ask a oh, gorgeous dress. I have to ask her if that's her farm, or if, if like they went to like a, a special location. Yeah, like, location I'm sure it's a wedding venue. Yeah, yeah. Right. but would it be great like if she lived on a farm? She could do like her own fishing and milk the cows, and you know, yeah, walk Especially around the field and plow the, the field <laughs> in the dress. Right. That reminds me of something from Rhinestone. It's the day my baby died. <laughs> This really happened. It was my Loretta. Jessica, I'm so sorry I made that about <laughs> Rhinestone. Listen, enjoy. Congratulations. And we'll see you soon. Congratulations. I'm going to I'm gonna reel Michael back now. <laughs> and then, of course, I'll let you bring this part in, our uh, dear Burt Young. Burt Young. That was a tough one. I heard that immediately put a lump in my throat. Um, pretty much speechless. I really don't know how to wrap it up. I mean, how do you play a character like Paulie, who you want to punch in the face one minute and then give him a hug the next? Um, just the, the range that he had. Um, no other actor I feel could have done that. Um, or it was a man's man, athlete, boxer, artist um he gave so much to the rock universe and i just uh kind of at a loss for words so rest in peace mr young i'm gonna miss you uncle Polly. just sad to hear about burt young's passing i think his character paulie made rocky what it was he gave rocky another character really build off of you know Aside from what he and Adrian had, it just so Paulie was like the brother he never had. So hearing about his passing, and I've been a lifelong Rocky fan. It really hurt because I always enjoyed him playing whatever character he was. But when he was Paulie, he sort of reminded me like my late Uncle Joe, like another version of him. So I always like was like, oh man, I love this guy, and he's a working man. He was a blue collar guy like me. So I always respected him for that, too. Man, I just, you know, Bert, rest in peace, brother. Bert, he will definitely be missed. He was such a vital part of Rocky. Each character was unique and special in their own way. And he played the role of that brother-in-law, that brother, that best friend that got under your skin, that irritated the hell out of you, but you loved him anyway. And he loved you back. He will forever be missed. He was such a vital part of Rocky. He will live in our hearts. And I want to thank him for his service to our country as a United States Marine. And thank you for his contribution to the acting world, sharing his talents and his love of acting. May you rest in peace, Bert, and he will always live in our hearts. Thank you. Hey guys, just want to say a few quick words about Burt Young. First, very sorry to hear of his passing. My condolences to his family. Burt will be, be missed tremendously. Um, he meant so much to us here in the Rocky community as Paulie. He brought so much to the role, so many emotions. Um, you really forgot Burt was acting. Um, he brought to the screen kindness and heart. He brought hate. Um, he brought a lot of shenanigans, 
But in the end, we love Paulie. Paulie was so perfectly matched um, with Rocky and Bert and Sly together. It was just, it was just, it just worked so well. Um, and he will be missed. He he basically did that in all of the different roles that he played: uh, Sopranos, Papa Greenwich Village, um, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. I mean, he did so much, and uh, he definitely will be missed. I had the opportunity of meeting Bert uh, on a few different occasions. One at a screening of Rocky, uh, where he told a lot of stories. He absolutely adored Sylvester Stallone. He referred to him as the kid uh, and his vision. So he loved you, Sly. And um, we definitely loved him. He left us with a lifetime of memories and a great character as Paulie in, in the Rocky franchise. Bert, thank you. We will miss you. All of our love. And again, my condolences to your family. So outside of Rocky, my kids and I have always talked about who our second favorite Rocky character is. It's always been a three-way tie between Mick, Apollo, and Paulie. But after thinking about it more, I gotta say it's Paulie. He's in all six Rocky movies as Rocky's best friend. He's gotta be the most important supporting character in the series. Burt Young's portrayal of Paulie was perfect. He makes my kids and I laugh harder than any other character. I also have to add, Bert was an incredibly kind and humble guy. I'm very thankful to him for giving me the time of day in Philly back in 2021 when he came to the Rocky statue. I happened to be at the Rocky statue when Bert came to visit it himself. He stood in line as if he were just a regular tourist. I walked up to him, asked him if I could grab a picture with him, very kindly said yes, and then he took pictures with several other fans. Thank you for everything. We love you so much. My kids love you. Huge fans of Paulie. <laughs> He's a man. We'll always love you, Paulie. Rest in peace. Stacy, we were talking about this right before, right before we, we came on. And, you know, it's, it's a weird thing to do. You know, we wanted to do this last week, but the time got away from us a little bit. And we were going to have Robert Bruzio on today. But literally, Stacy, this was like a last minute. I called you up to see if you were free, like yeah. in 10 minutes to do this. <laughs> I said, so, so Robert, if you're watching... <laughs> no hard feelings, buddy. I, I we had to do it now and go. Right. I, I it's my fault. I just don't have the time. So and we're gonna have Robert on talking because Robert is a good friend of of, of uh, Bert's, and we'll get him back on in the future uh, to talk about his his perspective of what that's like. But you know, the thing about it is is um, I wanted to be very happy. Yeah. A, a celebration of Bert's life versus. The, the 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 sadness maybe that a lot of us did feel when we were first hit i know it hit me like a ton of bricks i remember reading i was like oh shoot jeez right. it, it, it's a tough law it really is a tough law yeah. but we have a bunch of pictures and some videos and and a, and a couple of anecdotes i thought so stacy why don't you just leave it off with some yeah. video all right here we go this first one's 24 seconds in Rocky, I heard one of your favorite scenes is when you said, you owe me. I, said, oh, I'm, I was yelling at my sister, right? Mm -hmm. That hurt me. That scene hurt me. Because I, I was in love with Talia in, in real life. In real life? At that time, yeah. I still am, but at that time. And it killed me to be cruel to her. And it really knocked me out. Love that. Now, Stacey, this is something... This is a conversation I have with Sue quite often or uh, people on my tours from time to time. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're two actors, uh, two men. Okay. And you have to, you're facing each other for the cameras and you have to act and you're in the frame. So it's not like they're going to at cut it and add it in. I always wonder how you go there in your mind, because when I look at people on the tour, sometimes we do the fist up face to face in front of Mickey's gym or the steps or whatever. Yeah. I don't do it as much anymore, but people, they start to giggle because I'm looking at them like Rocky, like, like you're really right. Right. Cause that you want to sell that picture in that moment. Sure. But that's it. It's only for a few seconds and I have to do it over and over and over throughout an entire movie. How do actors go there? How do they do that? Like I always ask Sue, how mm -hmm. does a, a well-adjusted, happy married couple, how do, when he goes off the, he or she goes to work in the morning and it's going to be like a, a lovemaking scene for the movie. Mm -hmm. They're not gratuitous. But, right. And you're rolling around. and I mean, I, there's got to be tricks and everything. But still, what if you hate your coworker? What if you can't stand them and you got to. So my thing was, Bert said this. How did he go there? Where did he come from to 
pull up that anger because he even told me when when I went to visit him, he did have a crush on Talia Shire. This is not something he says for effect and all mm -hmm. affected. Like he did have a yeah. crush on her. Mm -hmm. So I don't what do you think? Where do they go to pull on that? I think that's a testament to his acting skill, his degree and level of acting skill and his exactly. ability to make Polly that real. Yep. Like so real. I he he somewhere in his life, you know, and they say every you know, these actors they pull from pain yeah. to get into those scenes. And and I don't know Burt Young at all, and I certainly don't know any of his personal business, but to be that convincing, he has got to have some things. <laughs> That he yeah. went through personally to be that convincing. Yeah. And I he, think that's what he does. Or did. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. You're you're totally you you nailed it 110%. When when and for everybody watching or listening right now, when you go back and especially the first Rocky, you know, Rocky two as well, you see a lot of it and, and a little bit later in, in Rocky uh, Balboa, but uh, in that first Rocky, there's a thing that Bert does. He has these weird hand movements when he yeah. like, you know, like when you're you wipe the corner of your mouth, right? Yeah. But when he would do it, he would he yeah, would do things hands, like this. Yeah. Rockle. You hungry, Rockle? Uh, yeah. You know, he would do these, these it, 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 it just it was quirks of the character. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's actually Burt Young. Mm -hmm. I get to spend some time with the guy, and he did movement. He he did that. And I don't think it was a thing he was putting on for me because he knew I was a Rocky fan. I don't mm -hmm. think he was doing it as Pauly. But I, anyways, I'll, I'll touch more on that in a little bit. Anyways, what else we got? This one is... That old tiger can still bang it out. Yeah. So, so, okay, where he was is the back room in his studio loft apartment. He has another <laughs> nice place, but this is where he does a lot of his work and keeps all of his art. And mm -hmm. it is a real apartment. It's got a refrigerator, a kitchenette. There's a couch there that we're going to see in a minute. Nice TV. Mm -hmm. uh, out Port Washington, it overlooked the bay out there. It, beautiful place, but that was the bedroom. Now, in the background, you see all those pictures ha hanging and lined up against each other. And what he did was he, I don't know, 80, 90, 100 paintings he must have had. Mm -hmm. And they're all large, five foot by eight foot canvases, four, four foot by three foot canvases and so on. And he had them all stacked against each other. And what he would do, he would tie his old dress socks in a knot and he would drop the knot in between each one. So it would be like a bumper. Okay, so yeah. they could lean without the paint sticking. Sticking, not, right. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so. I remember we had gone there. Uh, a uh, my my agent, my manager, who gets me uh, my Rocky gigs, guy Chris Wiseman. He, uh, we got an invite to Bert's house. I had befriended Bert at the Rocky premiere, Rocky Balboa premiere in two thousand and six. And so, long story short, we go out there, and uh, when he he greets us at this old green door, right, and he had a, a scotch in his hand. It was great. Uh, it, he was the kindest, nicest guy. And we sat for about four and a half or five hours in that apartment. When he took wow. us into the back bedroom and I see this, the, that very bag was hanging in the center of the room. Now the bed, if when, when you guys go back and rewind it and take a look at it, you'll see the bed is against the back wall and the bag is in the center of the room. That wasn't how it was set up when we went. When I went, the bed, the mattress was in right underneath it as if it was a tiny king size boxing ring oh and, yeah, yeah so, so he took us back there about two hours in once he knew we weren't psychotic and <laughs> said we weren't, we weren't there to mug him or anything right. and so we go back there and and he i said uh hey, and by this time he was, i was a mr young and he said, oh, call me bird call me bird uh -huh. uh, and he says uh i go what's with the, the mattress in the bag here and he goes oh when i'm here painting he goes i um can't sleep yeah. Well, what I do is I sleep here and uh, I pull the bag back and he showed me how he hung the bag around like he pulled it into the corner. Okay. Goes, but if I can't sleep. I let the bag come down and I, I go a few rounds in the bag and I get so goddamn tired. I fall asleep. <laughs> fall asleep. And I thought, 
like it's pretty smart. <laughs> pretty smart. It's better than ambient, right? <laughs> right. Going to eat Oreos at three o'clock in the morning. So right. So, anyways, that, I thought that was very interesting. But those paintings were all around, and and I believe you can go to Burt Young Galleries. Mm -hmm. Just Google Burt Young Galleries, Burt Young Paintings, and you can go there and pick up a lot of prints of it. You can go pick up. Uh, they sell the one mug. It's one of my favorite coffee mugs I have. I don't sweat you, and it's yes. that classic pose of Paulie with the the white jacket on and the cap in the in the meat locker. Yes, yes. so it's it's I usually use that mug on Monday. Yes, know? I love that. I don't know. All right, what else we got? All right. We have actually the way he greeted you at the door. So let's mm. do this. A manager. Comes to fancy, you know, what that gets me. I actually won a uh, Department of Parks contest in New York when I was about 11 years old. They gave me an easel and some paints and everything else. It was hot shit. I have favorite projects for different reasons. When I read the first Rocky, I said, oh, Christ. I, I never read something, something that had such clean street prose. I had my representative, you know, just, uh, you know, hold him back a little bit to try to twist a couple of dolls. It was a low-budget movie. All of a sudden, Stallone comes. And uh, he kneels down and says, Mr. Young, I'm Sylvester Stallone. I wrote Rocky. You know? I said, oh, shit, you did great, kid. You did really good. He says, you got to do it. You got to do it. I wrote the part thinking of you. I said, shh, I'm going to do it. Let me try to twist their arm a little bit. You know? <laughs> he goes, <laughs> so much he's so sweet he was incredibly sweet he really really was and you'll see so where the bag was hanging there okay mm -hmm. you'll see in the lower left hand corner stacy i sent you two pictures they're a little blurry but when you go back and watch it maybe you guys can pause it you will see a little painting in the corner given to burt young by sly is it this yes it is okay so leave that up there for a second so there you go. On the right, you'll see what looks like yellow stripes on there with a, a V and a line. Those are coins because oh. Paulie was always mm -hmm. about money. So those are coins from around the world that okay. Stallone, Stallone painted this and he glued it on there. Now, what does the green and the red mean? I don't know. Uh, infer what you will from that. I I guess I should maybe I'll I gotta ask Sly about that because I, I oh. would like his thoughts to critique this painting just because it's part of the Rocky Universe. And there you can clearly see Sly had drawn Paulie's head. That yeah. definitely is Paulie Burt Young. Mm -hmm. Um I remember when Burt brought that out because you know I'm a bit of a painter. I used to be a painter and I, I used to really enjoy it. Actually, I'm starting to miss it a little bit more. Anyways, uh he says, Oh, uh, you know, fellas, I got this. Sly did. No, he never called him Sly. All the time I was around Bert, I don't ever remember him saying Sly. Either the kid, yeah. if it was in the middle of a conversation, it was always the kid or Sylvester. And once in a while, eh, you know, Stallone felt this way, you know. But it, mm -hmm. it was not even Stallone. I, maybe one time he said that. It was always either the kid or Sylvester. And, mm -hmm. and I wonder... I wonder why he didn't use Sly. Now, I know Bert was a little older than Sly, not much. I, I, I wonder what that dynamic is, why he doesn't mm. say Sly. And not out of negativity. I, I think it's out of a beautiful love for Sylvester. I think it's like, you know, you call me Michael, Michael. when we're not on air, right? right. You're the only, you and my mother. Sue doesn't call me Michael. Nobody <laughs> calls me Michael. Nobody. <laughs> My mother, she's the, but the only person I know that does. Right. So I wonder what is that dynamic, you know, know, that that goes there. Is it more personal? I don't know. Maybe it's more personal. Oh, maybe it is. Mm -hmm. And Bert's that type of guy. He's a very personal guy. And you can tell by his paintings, he internalizes a lot. He takes the world in around him and then he puts it back out in an impressionistic type way. Uh, so do we, it, was there anything else? Any other videos on him? Let's see. There's, uh, I have actually three more. Um, okay. hang on. This one is about Bert's manager. This is cute. This is, um, a minute and 36. No, my, my guys in uh, from the old days, uh, they, they run pretty steady, pretty true. And I stay, I stay pretty close. Well, you know, it's funny because you have a manager. His name is Andy. Okay, now I, I heard, I mean, Andy was your old pal from 
Now, is, is it true, I mean, I think Andy has a bakery, but is it true that, that it was his bowling alley that people would call when they wanted to yeah. talk to Burt Young or book <laughs> Burt Young? Or, I mean, is your manager really somebody in, in a bakery? Well, uh, they used to reach him at Bridge Lanes. There was a bowling alley that we had, and uh, they'd be calling up, like, say, uh, negotiating for a Rocky or something, and they'd say, Bridge Lanes, you know. <laughs> and then the, the, the poor producer would say, your, your manager has a funny office. There's these, all these strange noises that... He says, yeah, it's a bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, Andy Giovingo, good, solid citizen. Okay, now Andy from the bowling alley is still your manager today? Sure. sure. Okay, now, but seriously, Bert, with all the movies and all of the things that you've been doing and are doing and producing and writing, di didn't you ever feel that you needed a, a manager or a press agent or, or somebody to help you in your career? Well, I, you know, I went through all that. I saw all the... All all the people in the business and some of them are bright and sharp and nice the truth of the matter is i had to convince andy I, and and worse he sends the checks back to me he doesn't want to take money he says no it's another bracket i don't want to be bothered with i have to force him to take a check can't beat that kind of guy so a couple things here All right Who smokes in an interview? Right. <laughs> Nobody, right? <laughs> yeah. But back then, that was probably 83, 85, somewhere in that time yeah. period. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it was even, maybe even Rocky Five. That could have been closer to 89. It probably mm -hmm. was 89. But even mm -hmm. still, smoke it. <laughs> don't give a shit. That's great. But the, you hear the, the gravel, the deepness, the, the, the health of his voice. And then, of course, as he goes later in life, of course, the voice gets weaker and weaker, mm -hmm. which is happens to all of us. OK, right. right. Uh, so but something like that for Bert to be old school like that. And, and mm -hmm. I tell you how I, I know that that's absolutely true. Uh, the night of uh, Rocky Balboa it premiered in, in, in uh, Philadelphia, uh, December 18, 2006. I was invited to the after party at the art museum. It was a private affair. Mm -hmm. And so I was in there walking around and Bert sees me and he remembers me. He calls me over to his table. I couldn't believe it. So he goes over and we're sitting there and he introduces me to all these white haired Italian guys. And they were <laughs> all older. Like they were, you know, up in age like he was. And he wasn't even that old, but still at the time, mid 60s. And uh, we start talking. <laughs> he goes, you gonna like this guy. He's a good kid. He's a good kid, this guy. And he's pointing to me and I go. He had just, you see, the thing is, is Bert had just talked to my father on the phone at the, uh, the, uh, at the end of Rocky Balboa. We were walking out. I had been sitting along with, with Bert and Milo mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, Geraldine Hughes who played little, uh, little Marie and so on. Mm -hmm. And so we're all walking out basically at the same pace. I just, their attention was slightly diverted. And so I decided to call my dad and <laughs> he, Bert, I had told my dad how, or I told Bert how my dad was, uh, loved his character. Paul, he was one of his favorite characters of all time in cinema. And Bert overhears the conversation and he taps me and he goes, who are you talking to? And I go, oh, it's my father. And he goes, give me the phone. Love and he that. starts talking to my father yeah. and I have, I have a picture of it somewhere if you remind me we can say oh yes. there it is there Stacey. it is, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> beautiful and so Bert is talking on the phone to my father and then oh. he, I could hear my father is rambling on and my and Bert puts the phone to his chest and he goes what's your old man's name <laughs> it was so great I said Mike senior he goes Mike senior your kid's a pain in the ass he's harassing me all night call him off will you call him off <laughs> It was great. <laughs> it was great. You know? So anyways. Um, oh. Uh, so uh, later that night, uh, Bert and I were, were talking a little bit, and I maybe monopolized 20 minutes of his time. Oh, we were just wow. talking about just things in gym, mostly Rocky, but then it just about the evening and some of his friends. He was telling me how he knew his friends and so on. Anyways, I, I let him go and, and in peace and, and real cool. I, I didn't want to burden him. And then... About two hours later, it's the end of the night. It's about one o'clock in the morning and everybody's closing up. <laughs> of course, I'm like, I had nothing to drink or eat that night. But um, at the end of the night, I, Sue and I getting ready to leave, going back to the hotel. And I see Bert coming around the corner. And I had told him that my wife loves, he, she loved you as Bobby Bacliera's father. 
mm-hmm. old man Bacchieri mm-hmm. in The Sopranos. Okay, mm-hmm. and in The Sopranos, he had this the Pauly laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He had that Paulie laugh, but he used that to great effect in the movie. And he was coughing all the time. He had lung cancer. So mm-hmm. he, he kept coughing in this episodes of The Soprano. I think he was in two or three episodes. Anyways, um, he sees my wife. And as he comes around the corner, he starts coughing. <laughs> <laughs> and they're surrounded by like seven people. And he's not stopping coughing. He's literally going into old man Bacchieri, right? <laughs> And everybody thinks he's choking. And he, he's looking at me and he, he puts his hand up like, no, no, don't, don't. And he's going more and more. And he's <laughs> he's looking like this, you know, and he's going to really mess with them. Yeah. And then he goes, comes over to my wife and he goes, that's old man Bacchieri. He <laughs> must be Mike's wife. Aww. It was the most amazing thing because he knew she loved that character. Yes. So he did that for her. That and uh, awesome. I, I have a picture of Sue with him from that night. Good. You got to get that I, to I, me. Yeah, okay. Well, you got to text Sue and get the okay because she, uh, she don't let me do that stuff. None. You don't give oh. me pictures. But if you text her, you know, hmm. maybe she'll maybe she'll let that let go. Us. All right. What a cool moment. Uh, we got two more. Okay. Uh, this is quick. The Rocky thing, the, that that made history, you know, for us all. And I think it was helpful to the country. It was a important clean piece and uh, it's still making history today uh, the kid did fine for us all viewers and and participants the kid i love that and oh, it's true yeah. can i tell you i don't know if you feel i'm like there's no i don't know i don't feel like there's any good movies anymore it's like i don't know if all the ideas are taken up or but those good wholesome quality movies that stick with you for i don't know 45 years like right. i don't feel like we see it anymore you're you're one thousand percent right and everything now in hollywood is a formula it's put into a yeah. computer and what they feel okay based on previous this is what's going to do well so there's just these stupid gun violent movies and mm-hmm. i don't have anything against gun violence per se but it, there's a point to it there's mm-hmm. just, i don't know fast and the furious 14 i mean mm-hmm. i don't know i mean it just i, I we saw what happened with expendables 4 yeah. With Expendables 4, I mean, boom, flat. Mm-hmm. There was just, I know Sly's involvement was nowhere near what it was in the others. Mm-hmm. And I surmise, had they listened to Sylvester, the movie would have been considerably better than right. how. A little more movie. substance, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. A little a little mm-hmm. more substance. But yeah, I, I think Bert, Bert was right that at the time, it really, Rocky did something. It was at the end of Vietnam. You know, the country was at a very low point and they needed some type of, um, not not a hero, but for the American public, they, it, it's like they needed someone who was like them, mm-hmm. but tried maybe a little harder than the average person did. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's one of the giant appeals to Rocky, that they saw themselves in Rocky's fedora they saw them, themselves in the jacket i know i certainly did well i think rocky brought the country together oh my I god mean, yeah. there's a bajillion things that divide us and that's true today and then here in our very own rocky rocky bubble we have everyone we have every persuasion and yet all of us love rocky so it's a unifying story Stacey. You said something before that is uh, when we weren't recording. It doesn't matter religious. It doesn't matter political affiliations. All that goes out the window. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. Right. Everybody comes together. They just you're just a human. That's right. who you are. You're a fellow human who loves Rocky. There, nothing else permeates that bubble, and I love that because that's one of the few places in the world is is a, a, a lovely little Rocky Files podcast where right. you can come away with some positivity and not worry about hearing all the division and negativity in the world. I was talking to Kevin last night, and I said I feel like this Rocky Files thing that continues to grow is almost like the friendship dating app for all yeah. rocky fans to find right. each other because, i know i know because we just it's like if you're a rocky fan you automatically understand something about the other person that 
all the other things that might divide were like, well, the most important thing we have in common. So that's, that's what we'll focus on. <laughs> Could you imagine? That's so funny. Just think of this scenario. Imagine people are out at a bar some night. I don't know. It's yeah. some country, America, and where, wherever they are. Okay. They're somewhere and they're at a club, a nightclub, and they're talking. Uh, how did you meet? Did you meet on Tinder? No. <laughs> did you meet on Grasshopper? No. no. Did you meet on um, <laughs> All, fooling-around.com? Right. No. <laughs> Where'd you meet? Rocky Files. <laughs> Oh, I don't know oh. that one. Is that? Oh, you should go on it. <laughs> yes, we're Rocky File. People meet, get married, and have babies. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It happens. <laughs> oh, we have one more. This is my favorite one. And this is, I don't know. I love his reverence for the whole, you know, the Rocky story, I of think, course. comes out in this video. Hang on. Well, I read the script, Rocky, the Rocky script. It was like a masterpiece of insimplicity. It was half a character, half reality. But it was very touching, very moving. It was like a moving poetry. It was beautiful. I'm in the commissary in California. A young guy squats next to me. He says, Mr. Young, I'm Sylvester Stallone. I wrote Rocky. I says, fucking congratulations. I'm proud. He says, you, you gotta do it. I says, Shh, I, let me twist that arm a little bit. I'm gonna do it, you know. That's when we first met each other. I was the highest paid actor in the first Rocky. More than he was. I, I was a strong piece of writing. Uh, I didn't take a chance. I dove into it. You don't have to go too far for him. He's very bright and funny, too. But we work very well together. Very good. I think he understood how special Rocky was yeah. before most. Like, he knew oh, we got something. He was right there. You know, like being on the cusp of something yeah. very, very big. He was right there watching yeah. it all unfold, being a massive part of it. I mean, could you imagine Harvey Keitel as Rocky? That's oh. who they originally went to before Burt. Harvey yeah, Keitel. Yeah, the, the list is like ugh, not in a million years for any of them. I I know. Could I'm you see Cher or, or Susan Sarandon or Bette Midler no. as Adrian? Yeah, no, we went over them. I remember in many episodes ago, it just yeah. doesn't fit. Nobody plays Polly the way he does. Nobody plays Adrian the way Tyler Shire did. It was it was casting magic. It was yeah. like the stars were aligned. They came together perfectly. And I think the lesson of Polly and I, it was a comment in one of Sly's um, when he posted, somebody made a comment and I'm going to try to find it because I want to give credit. And I was like, that was exactly it. That people can be flawed, but still be very loyal they can still be a very good friend right. Right. they can still be a meaningful part of your family you know we have to forgive each other for being human and he was clearly very human and you right. want to hug him and slug him at the same time but yeah. you know we're all flawed and yet we can still be in each other's corner and i just loved his comment i'm going to go back and try to find it it was perfectly stated and um you're right yeah <laughs> we're we're all flawed gems in the crown of life, man. We are. <laughs> right. We are. No, seriously. And I think that's a great segue from Burt Young into Sly's documentary. Yes. Oh, I mean, wait. Friday, it's going to be out on Netflix. So, <sighs> I mean, this is going to be brilliant. It, it really, really is. I was it lucky is. enough. Sue and I went Sunday night. We got to a special screening of it in Philadelphia. And it was brilliant. Went down about 8 o'clock. And it. We had such a great time. I mean, this was, man, it was a great, great doc. And Sly really opens up in this. So I'm not, I'm all, I'm just going to give you just a little bit to, to think on because I really do want you to enjoy it as I was able to enjoy it firsthand without being told much about it. Uh, Sly gets incredibly candid in this mm -hmm. um, about his parents. Uh, that, that was one of the uh, these are definite reveals things that i had known about from uh, my in-depth reading and from susan faludi's 
uh, The Emasculation of the American Male. So a book out a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was nearly 25, 35 pages in there where Sly opens up about his dad. And he opens up even more now with mm -hmm. some unbelievably heartbreaking video that he puts in there about his father. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's quite beautiful. And I, I think everybody's going to love it. And of course, oh my God, I mean, my, my favorite stuff is the Rocky stuff. I mean, he right. just, he goes into detail with a few nuggets of stuff. Even I didn't know. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's saying a lot. And it was, it was, it was great. Got a standing ovation at the end. We all loved it. And um, it was, it, it, it was wow. really, really good. It was. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm one. <laughs> I'm a night owl, so if that thing is available at midnight on Thursday night, <laughs> I wonder if that's Friday. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that's what Netflix does. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I I, I think they do do that, but mm -hmm. well, you know, we'll yeah. all, we'll all see it again on Friday. I know I'll be looking forward to it. Oh, I'm uh, glad you had a chance to uh, see it early. That's kind of fun to be part of that. Mm. You know, it, it really is. And speaking of, there's a friend of mine. So I like. You know, I, I, I have this uh, opportunity in my life to directly message Sly and ask him questions about Rocky. And um, I suppose I could ask him Rambo questions, too. And maybe someday I will. But my mind is such a sponge still for Rocky. And uh, whenever I, I come across something, I... I'm going to talk about a story right now that someone reminded me of. And, uh, you know, I, I have index cards in my desk. I have about 140 <laughs> index cards. And then I have about seven pages of paper with questions on the minutia of Rocky. And so we are going to get him on this podcast at some point. I promise everybody. But until then, I just chip away little, a little by little. little. <laughs> and next thing you know, I have like a Mount Rushmore of questions, right? Like right. it's all chiseled and they're in place. Anyways, um, a, a friend of mine from Instagram, I think we have his picture. I sent you uh, so everybody could know who he is. There he is, Dan Owens. Very mm -hmm. nice guy. Well, he sends me this question. I put it together, and uh, I, I sent it to Sly. If you want to throw this up there, I'll, I'll read it out loud. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, here it is. So I texted Sly. Okay, minutia time. In Rocky Balboa. The famous Leroy Neiman painting of Apollo and Rocky from their third fight at Mickey's gym is hanging in Adrian's. I think fans were so familiar with the painting and know that it is so ingrained in the Rocky lore. It was just accepted that it made sense for the painting to be there. But if you step back and think it was just Rocky and Apollo in the gym that night. So how could that be? Our fan theory, along with some with some other fans, that Apollo had hired his friend, Leroy Neiman, to come to the gym that night to do a painting, to commemorate the evening, and to give it to Rocky as a gift. The same way Apollo had him in the background doing art while he was training for the Rocky rematch in two. Now, I know we hear Apollo say, no TVs, no newspapers, just you and me. But I think that is in reference to the press and fans not being able to watch the third fight and not disqualifying that there could have been another person there in the gym that night in the background. So does that sound plausible or were you just looking for a cool picture to hang on the back wall at Adrian's? I know Dempsey's restaurant inspired the thought of a painting. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so then he writes this morning. Actually, it's incredibly implausible. <laughs> <laughs> this is the use of cinema. I went to a regular freeze frame and a freeze frame transferred into arc, which we had previously seen during Rocky's training camp in the form of a giant banner in the background. So it works in every way. Everything does not have to be literal. And this is a conversation that I had with Derek Wayne Johnson. Now, just let's what what did Sly mean a little bit by what he just said? Show that little video of the Rocky Three training. Relax, enjoy it all, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this is what I love. So, again, this is us as fans 
delving into this minutia where it never it doesn't exist. <laughs> Sly said it himself. None of that happened. No, you're going too deep. It's just cinematic. It just works. Right. And it and and it does. But again, this is a testament because in Adrian's, and I think you did put the picture up of him and with the restaurant in the picture while I was reading that. Yes, I did. Yeah, okay, did. okay. But now look at how it's influenced us in both of our backdrops. Mm -hmm. We have these big paintings yeah. of the very painting we're talking about, yeah. right? Yeah. There you go. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, this painting, when I saw it, not only did I see it in the movie, but I saw it while they were filming it. You were able to go and have dinner at Adrian's restaurant on the weekends. And we were there one night and Sly was there from dinner. And I got to talk to him about this very painting. Mm -hmm. uh, it was still up. All the props were up. And it was... I, I was just gobsmacked at that moment that it was all right there. So it just goes to show you how what goes around comes around. Now, I don't know that he knew in Rocky three, he was going you know, we saw the big painting, the Leroy Neiman, uh, mm -hmm. the poster of Rocky three in the background. I mean, I, he probably didn't know at the time. Oh, you know, in three more movies, I'm going to have a comparable <laughs> painting in the background. It right. just worked out that way. And Sly's mind is so artistic. He sees the fluidity of it. So, I just I just love it and I love passing it on to fans. I love so this will keep alive. It's like the American Native Indian tradition, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> an, uh, an elder statesman right. tells someone and that someone tells 10 people and those right. 10 people tell 20 people and on and on and on and forever these stories will live. Rocky will never die. And right. this is <laughs> there's one thing I can say I contributed to. It's that. And I, oh. you and I, you and I both have contributed to that. Well, thank you. But I mean, you've been doing this for decades. <laughs> you know yeah, but we saying? wouldn't be doing I it right really now will. if it wasn't for you. No. And you know that. <laughs> thank you. You're sweet. All right. I want to show this one picture. Yeah, go I didn't ahead. Show go ahead. The, the oh, that's right. There he is. Okay. So for a lot of you guys, when I was reading that, so you, you guys, this is a quick shot, and there are two different angles. We see Leroy Neiman there in his white cabana wear with his hat, <laughs> and of course, he's painting Apollo. And then the camera also goes over Leroy's shoulders, and mm -hmm. we see him with the burgundy painting Apollo jumping yep. rope. Mm -hmm. So go back and check that out. That is Leroy Neiman, also the ring announcer in Rocky Three. <laughs> At the end of the the Thunderlips match, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? I love that. I love that. That is a, such a yeah. I know. I agreed it, with that sentiment. <laughs> it was a, a hell of a. I can't wait. Sometimes we have to do an in depth dive on the Thunderlips match. I just think that was great. Oh, that's it really one of was. my favorite. Scenes. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's walking. I love that. He's my. Why are they carrying him? He's walking. <laughs> hey, old Mick, how much you think he weighs? <laughs> About two hundred and two pounds. <laughs> And in the he ring, eats how much he eats, right? Yeah, how much he eats. eats. That's right. That's right. <laughs> weighing two hundred and two pounds, for Rocky Balboa. I love that. <laughs> that's just such a great scene. Christ, <laughs> I absolutely love it. All right, what's next? Okay, so here's a little video coming up. I want to play. It's like fifteen seconds. Uh, Stacy, just play this alarm clock video. Did you see what I saw in that video? 4 a.m. is what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> One, the ring on that clock was, oh, my God, god-awful, annoying. A headache first yeah. of the day. <laughs> yeah. But if you look to the right of that, there are a stack of books. There you go. Okay, now the one in the middle is turned upside down. What I did was I sent you a picture of it up right side up. And what does that say? That says Baseball Stars of 1968, edited by Ray Robinson. Mm. And do you know what I'm currently reading right now? I have no doubt what you're reading. <laughs> That's awesome. Where'd you find it? Oh, my gosh. So, nice. Uh, is Love it backwards it. or can it's you It's upside read down. Upside down. Yeah. Here. You know what? I'm going to make you bigger here. Hang there on. we go. There we go. Baseball stars of 1968 by Ray Robinson. So now, not only did I get this, okay, but <laughs> when I open it up, there's a $100 gift card inside for a wine voucher. <laughs> nice. I couldn't believe it. Somebody left believe... it in there. Somebody left it in there. <laughs> so, you know. 
Again, I am all about the minutia. This is my thing. This right. is this. It's an addiction. It's a problem. It's an issue. I don't know what it is, but this has plagued me my whole life. And I guess it's ultimately served me fairly well. It's your career. So, this is uh, your job. Yeah, it's true. That's yeah. true. I, I, I do tend to poke fun at myself because I don't know. I think it's easier than looking in the mirror sometimes so oh, like, come on. Mm, i don't know maybe we should let that one go but uh <laughs> I, I do I, I i do i was watching it probably i don't know two months ago mm -hmm. and i had it on the big screen here and i said hmm you know what i said what, what is that book that's kind of bright what if i could just take that and flip it so i took a picture of the screen i flipped it and i said oh okay ah let's go check out ebay bingo Boom. right on ebay the and fact thought, that you're still after in numerous viewings of every single one of them for your whole life. Up near life, a thousand. We're up near a thousand of the original Rocky. Easily. Easily. The fact that you're still finding these little nuggets Crazy. to dig into. Crazy. And that's, but to see, people think, <laughs> boy, Mike, Mike's such a nice, easy guy to live with. No, no, no. Put Sue's <laughs> head on for a while, okay? She has to deal with this because it's and, – and, again, it doesn't – I know it doesn't sound like a lot right here mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're in the Rocky bubble, and we're like, yeah, Rocky, wow, this is great. But imagine, oh, Rocky, for 35 years. This is why we come here. Yes. <laughs> to do this. Imagine – the constant, the hamster yeah. on the wheel, it never stops. Even for Sly, he moves past it. He comes back and revisits it often, thank God. Mm -hmm. But uh, whether he's in a movie, in an interview, a post, or <laughs> talking to me, he does revisit it. Yeah. So that's great. But you see, it, it becomes this giant ferris wheel in my life that like to get on this ferris wheel you have to take a running leap on the ramp from the ticket booth mm -hmm. to get on because mm -hmm. i never it goes constantly mm -hmm. and um i wish i knew a way to just back off it a little bit i i don't mm -hmm. only because i think for people around me it's easier for them i mean i could think about rocky stuff all day long and it's right. great and go right to bed but I, I do see people's faces go. <laughs> Enough. Jesus. You know what? To us, it matters, though. You know, to us, we don't. Yeah, I know. I we know. don't. I, yeah. If you have to ramp it back for your family and friends who aren't quite as on board as we are, that, that makes sense. But I know that it matters. The, the all the facts and the details that, you know, because the questions come to the Rocky Files. All the time. Hey, Mike, can, what about this? Hey, Mike, what about that? I mean, I get those questions all the time. I send you the screenshot yeah, and I'm like, yeah. hey, do you know the answer to this question? Yeah, yeah. It matters that you're, you know, those little details and the questions, like you said, what they come up with is like, hey, that's a really good question. I never thought of that. So you well, are the guy they go to. <laughs> I, I know it's funny because that's all I ever wanted when I was a kid. I just wanted to, I wanted to have purpose in the Rocky world. Yes, I wanted do. to matter. I didn't care if I mattered in the real world. That, <laughs> if I mattered to the people that love me. Okay. Great. Yeah. Well, that, sure, sure. 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 Mm -hmm. That goes without saying, but other than that, I never cared if people, if I mattered anywhere else, but in this Rocky world, mm -hmm. I, I, I do see signs that people oh, are yeah. fairly, yeah. you know, accepting of what it is i do this is why it's again this is why entertainment is so important it's funny because yeah. you know yeah. i i went into nursing because it was mom's idea and i didn't i know what i wanted to do i was you know i wanted to be a music major but you know speaking to parents of my generation they don't understand those things you know yeah. so yeah because i wanted my life the service to be escape from real life which is why yeah. I loved music, music videos, movies. I just wow. loved all of it my whole life. I wanted to be in there. And back then, with an engineer and an ex-nun, they don't understand that stuff. You know right. what I mean? You're going to be a nurse. And not yeah. to say I didn't love my nursing. I did. But I wanted my life to be escape from hard reality, not part of hard reality. Boy, like, you ran towards hard reality. Right. Which nursing is. It's like, this is the exact opposite of what I wanted. So that's why when I see what you're doing and you're like, oh, you'll make those comments, you know, oh, 
you know, I don't, it doesn't matter to real life. Escape from real life matters. Getting that's, a break. That's a fair, fair play there. So to be able to come to you and just put all the headaches to bed and be like, hey, does Mike know this little Rocky fact? Is It matters. It if does. that's, I'm telling you, if you ever bump into me somewhere out on the street <laughs> at a get together somewhere, the secret to get me talk. Well, there is no secret to get me talking. I'll talk. If right. No wants me to talk. I'll just Thank talk. God. Okay. Yeah, I will definitely come in here. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, it's easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> Much easier for me. And listen, before we sign off, just so everybody knows, this is not the Mike Kunda show. Okay. Oh. I always ask Stacy. I always ask Stacy, what do you want to talk about? You want to right. talk about what's going on in your life? And Stacy, mm. what's the big fat answer you always give me? <laughs> I don't like to. I have nothing to talk about. I don't want to talk about myself. Right. People want to hear from you. And I, and I know people want to hear from me. Yeah, they if, do. If you got a question, just DM me. I, you know, it, my, my story is the same. I'm taking care of two old folks. That's my story. The end. Beginning. <laughs> there's, there's nothing changing right now. So I'm fine. <laughs> this is like my sanity right here. You know, you've often is, you've often yeah. said that you have and I and I, <laughs> I have to agree um this is uh this is pretty good it's uh it's a bummer when we, we take a week off but um i gotta tell you it's good to be here yeah oh i love being here we have so much fun we really do and i just want to say you didn't know i was going to bring this up oh no <laughs> uh, this right yes here. thank you this is i You're got welcome. this and i just it even smells like the 70s it does, it, right? You know, like the old library books. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Exactly. So this, Mike sent me this, and you had several of these, and you wrote inside, which you said, Stacey, you are the heart of the Rocky Files. That was extremely True. sweet and very True. nice. And I just love this original kind of stuff. So, First copy. Um, yeah. Thank First you. Edition. And that you're very, very welcome. And that is really the book that in one other book were the two books that got me started um, <laughs> on this uh, collegiate hall on Rocky knowledge. Um, yeah. Many, many, many uh, yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of great nuggets in there. And the reason I like that book is because Sly wrote that book maybe six months after Rocky. Yeah. Everything was still fresh Gosh. in his mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I know he does still carry so much freshness. He still remembers a lot of it because mm -hmm. I, he must revisit it in his mind from time to time or whatever. But the original rock, you're talking 47, 46, 47 years ago, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. he writes down all of his very intimate thoughts about the character and how things were done. I would implore all of you. Yeah. It's called the official Rocky scrapbook. Mm -hmm. Do yourself a favor, go on eBay. They range from $18 to $150. So just skirt. And I've, I always buy a copy. I, we talked about this in the past, I think two or three episodes ago. Yeah. We talked about this. I, I have probably five or six copies and I also have one. I want to send to my friend, Sean uh, O'Donnell out there in Ireland oh. because Sean's a big, uh, he's he's a big uh, uh, Rocky holic like uh, us yeah, too. So I have Sean. I haven't gotten to sending it yet, <laughs> but I I will. I promise. And Stacy, I owe you a pretender poster. Oh yes. Oh, so that's yes. coming soon. I promise. Do you want me to sign it or no? No, just just give it yeah. To me. I would love you to sign it. Oh uh, yes, I would. I, will. I would like your signature, your autograph, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that'll look very great in the frame on the wall, please. Thank you. It's gonna go right. There, uh oh, you got a spot for it uh, opposite my Babcock clock. <laughs> the Babcock original, boy, yes. <laughs> gotta be careful how you say Rick's last name, but yes, it's a Babcock original. Love you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, so. hey, listen, are we out of here? Are we, we we're good. under an hour? Look we at did. that. Can you imagine that? Wow, wow, wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut in your book. I don't have it near me because it's on my coffee table because I'm uh -oh. reading it. Anyway. I listen. I think everybody knows. Cue the Rocky music. You can go to barnesandnobles.com, exlibris.com. You can go anywhere. Amazon, it's on. Check it out. You will love it. The Pretender, little movie that Jimmy Toscano made. Guy from Detroit. Uh, there it is. The dream is real. Never give up on your dream, folks. You don't have to be a Rocky guy. You can be uh, anything you want to be in life. Don't give up. Stacy, where can people find you? I am at Had Me at Yo on Instagram as well as at The Rocky Files and on Facebook at The Rocky Files Podcast. Boom. Boom. 92. Boom.
Okay, everybody. We are out of here. Like we always say, keep punching. punching.